When it comes to small UPS units with a major nerd appeal, I don't think you can do much better than these very old early 90s to early 2000s APC back UPS units. Indeed, this had a very long lifespan, I believe, from what I've been able to find out. They were introduced in 1993, and all of these units have a serial number stating that they're made in 2000 or 2001. So, these units almost had a 10 year life cycle, and indeed, their PCBs have a rather high revision on them, so I'm inclined to believe that. These units uh, rarely have something going for them in how they are constructed and uh, I've taken one of them apart, this one suffered water damage so it's not going to ever see the light of power again I'm afraid but if we have a look at the PCB you will notice a very distinct lack of a processor indeed we've got a KA339, I believe that's an op amp. 4000 series logic, 4000 series logic. That's 4000 series logic, 4000 series logic, and a switch converter. Linear voltage regulator, coupler transistors, relay, large standby transformer, and that's it. These are pretty much the simplest and most open units you can find. They don't have any black magic going on whatsoever, and if you, you're able to trace this circuit out, well, then you've got access to how the entire unit works, and you can do whatever you want with it. They also have a very distinct lack of electrolytic capacitors. In general, this one's got, what, one, two, three, four in total. And they just have all the prerequisite for being very hackable, very reliable units. They also have an advantage compared to their newer brethren, like this uh, 500 VA back UPS RS, which succeeded them, and that is that they are not line interactive. And that is in some ways not, not a good thing, but uh, for a home user you get the advantage of extremely low idle power consumption. And if this meter is hooked up to the biggest of these units, the 650 VA one here, which is <laughs> my favourite small UPS of all time, although I seem to be calling every UPS my favourite UPS, but this one's definitely got a solid spot along among the small units. And 3 watts idle power consumption, no efficiency loss when you in increase the load, since uh, you don't, you're not going to free a transformer, this is essentially just an extension cord when it's plugged into the mains. So they're very uh, economical to run. They're also very economical on the battery while well, they're just sitting idly. You know, this one's running off battery, the 300 VA version, and it's using 300 milliamps. And uh, the, the inverter is generally just quite efficient. Of course, it's not a pure sine wave inverter, it's just a jagged thing that uh, won't work properly with all devices and might cause some things to go up in smoke. But hey, every small UPS is like that, with very few exceptions. Another major advantage of these units is that despite actually having a small switch mode converter in them, they run absolutely quietly, especially since the big transformers are not hooked up to the mains as they usually are in line interactive APCs. So these don't have any screeching or any humming noise whatsoever when they're just sitting, as you can hear. Not a hint of a noise. Now, if we compare that to their modern cut-in, well, If you're like me and don't like hissing, buzzing, ticking noises while you're trying to use your computer, 
you can appreciate <laughs> a unit that's built to standard that doesn't make it screech like some kind of a lunatic. Granted, what you the thing you pay off, or the price for all this is that these units are extremely basic. The small ones don't even have any communications ports, and all configuration is done on the back side. You can even set these between 50 and 60 hertz. You do, however, also get uh, some configuration on these potentiometers on the circuit board. I believe I said frequency and output voltage. And yeah, there we've got our transfer voltage, frequency output, voltage output, RDS adjust. I'm not sure what that one does. I haven't really looked into the schematic of them. I've never had to actually do any service on them because these things just work. This one, however, has failed because I think it's been lying upside down in the rain since this is what the case looks like. I'm not going to bother fixing it, sadly. It's just not worth it. Just going to use it for parts. Who knows, maybe this thing could make a cute little computer case of some sort. Also, aside from the screeching issues, the a disadvantage of these newer units is that since they actually are line interactive, their idle power consumption is a lot higher than the old ones. And uh, this uh, well, since the electricity is going through a transformer, they have an efficiency to them. So, the larger your load, the more loss you'll have in your UPS. So, this idle consumption might be 15, 20 watts when the unit's actually fully loaded down. Whereas on the old ones, it's just going to be that 3 watts. And it's going to be 3 watts no matter what you do with it. And as is obvious, these new ones are mostly SMD. Which isn't a bad thing in itself, but they are simply are not as serviceable as the older ones. And a real poor thing is these have quality control issues because I have never seen one of these using proper high quality capacitors. Indeed, this one's I, this particular one I've had to replace this cap and at least one of these two. That I think the originals are well on brand. And I've even had to replace that resistor because it was burned off when I got it. I think this is another revision of these that have had a bit of a design flaw. You can even see it's not as visible from the inside, but on the outside, the case has actually gone brown from that resistor running too hot. And I think that might be caused by a bad battery drawing too much current for too long time. So, yeah. That indicates a rather undersized battery charger, which um, you, you don't want to see that because you, you don't want your battery to go dead after your first power outage. Whereas on the old ones, I don't think there's too much risk of a linear regulator and a very basic off-the-shelf switching IC failing on you. Now, the obvious downside to these units is uh, that only the largest 650 VA unit supports any kind of PC communication and it only does for dumb protocols so for starters you need the somewhat fancy dumb APC cable I don't happen to have one of those and I can't be bothered to build one so I'm not going to demonstrate how it works but you basically just get a couple of signals out of them so you get like I'm working fine you got grid power I'm running on batteries, I've got low battery and you can also tell it to shut down but only when it's running on batteries so you don't get any kind of runtime estimation, you don't get any kind of uh, battery management, I don't even think you get an automated self-test and I don't think you can start one off the computer so yeah, they're a bit manual in their ways you do of course get on the larger models, the 500 and the 650VA model, you get the self-test button, which is very <laughs> simple indeed. It just runs a self-test as long as you press the button. You 
you could probably drain your entire battery by just holding the button down. There's basically no hysteresis on it. And it's a bit amusing. Something that you do get that you don't always get is an alarm silencing button. If of course you don't have the alarm disabled by the dip switch on the back, but I don't think that disables the low battery alarm, so I believe these will always have a low battery alarm unless you desolder the speaker out of them. The power switch is also extremely on-off. It's basically just turning a relay on the moment you flick the switch. So, you could probably break something by doing this. But, it's all in the name of simplicity. There's nothing to go wrong in these. So really, if, if you want to have a proper, simple, reliable UPS, I don't think you can do much better than to pick up one of these. They usually go for next to nothing if you even pay anything for them. They are very common trash picks, because no one wants them in a modern system where they don't have a proper communication stuff. And, well, to be frank, they look like something straight out of the 1980s. So yeah, I'm not sure if there's too much else to say about these. The difference between the models are very subtle. The 300 and 500 VA models use the same PCB, basically. It's just that the 300 VA model don't have doesn't have the uh, test button populated there. That's the only difference I've been able to spot. It might use different transistors as well, but it has the same number, 4, which is the bare minimum you can get away with anyway. And they have different transformers. The 500 VA model has a slightly larger one, but not by a huge margin. I could probably, if I wanted to, just swap this 300 VA board into this 500 VA case or just take the transformer from there and put it to there and make it a more powerful unit, but I can't really be bothered. I'm not sure if there's any supporting stuff that needs to go into getting the switch back in, since that's obviously a, lar a large advantage of the, the larger ones, they can actually start on battery, which is something this one can't do. It just beeps at you and does nothing, because for battery start of routine... Oh, shut up. The battery start of routine involves you pressing the silence alarm button, and wow, this one has a powerful beeper. Huh. Huh, that's like a fire alarm. Old oh, back UPS is very reliable, very very simple, very serviceable, not very high performing, basic things, but I personally like a lot. And just as a final note, here's the a look at the output waveform at idle, and when switching on a roughly 400 watt load on the 650VA model. As you can see, its regulation is very, very quick. The battery in it isn't the strongest right now, so the peak voltage drops quite a lot since it's only using a single tap on the transformer. The peak voltage is dependent on the battery voltage. But re the regulation of this is generally quite good. Sticking quite close to 230 there. No matter how much I abuse it.
just does not give a single fuck. You can't do that in a modern unit, can you? And using roughly 17.3 amps at 13.45 volts, that we were and using a rather exact 200 watt load. I've measured these light bulbs. Uh, we get an efficiency of uh, about 85%. The Total power consumption of this unit is about 232 watts for 200 watts out, which is quite respectable for a 12 volt unit. I was expecting it to be closer to 80, but yeah, we're even at 85.9. That's actually very, very good. The transformer on the low frequency side of this unit tend to drag the efficiency down. So, despite being rather old technology, we certainly do hold up in the efficiency department. And, yeah, they're barely even getting warm. And it's been running for a little while now. Now, adjusting the charge voltage is a bit trickier than usual on these units. We're now looking at the schematic for the charging circuit of the 650VA model, but it's the same in the smaller ones as far as I'm aware. And we've got our input transformer, a rectifier, and then a strategically unnamed IC1, followed by two diodes going to battery. And this very hidden IC, it's covered in a heating so you can't see the number on it, but it's a 7815, so this charging circuit is really ugly <laughs> because all they're doing is dropping the voltage off a 7815 with two diodes and hoping that it's going to be kind of the right voltage at the end. So if you want to change the voltage, you've either got to make this some kind of variable regulator or you've got to change the diodes or do something to just to modify the voltage. Of course the best course of action would be to just replace this with an LM317 or something of the like and entirely remove these two dropping diodes because that's <laughs> quite a stupid way of going about it but I suppose it's cheap although I can't imagine an LM317 being cheaper than an LM7815 and two diodes Hmm, strange. Either way, if we look at the 650VA model, we've got IC num IC1 here. There's a whole rat's nest of traces, but we've got it running straight to diode 18 here, which is dropping diode number 1, and then straight on to diode 2 here, which is dropping diode number 2. Then it snakes around somewhere and goes to the battery fuse. So, that's how you change the charging voltage on these. This one actually has way too low charging voltage, I just noticed it, 13.25 volts. Which is, well, not really acceptable. I wonder if it's been that way since factory or not. It's better to have a too low charging voltage than a too high, I suppose, but, yeah. I don't quite like it. If we have a look at the smaller PCB, we've got IC1 right here, and dropping diode number 1 here, and dropping diode number 2 there. Also notice that the trace for the battery charger is off after diode 2 on this board, so that might be one of the key reasons for it not working. But, yeah, I'm not going to bother trying to fix this water damage thing anyway. So there we go. Bit of usual information as well. Cheerio.